Blessed are the meek, part three. We left the disciples in the upper room, resenting each other, not wanting to wash each other's feet. The bowl was there, the jug was there, the towel was there, but nobody wanted to wash the grime from the dusty dirt roads from between their toes. The disciples were furious, furious and angry with each other, each jostling for a place in the kingdom. Jesus wanted his disciples to know that even though they confessed to each other that they were disciples of him, it did not ensure them a place in his kingdom. Let me explain it this way. I can confess that I'm a Christian and I can claim to follow the Lord Jesus, but that does not make me a Christian or ensure me a place in heaven. So Jesus, we are told, took the basin and the water and the towel and kneeling at the feet of a disciple, he began to wash his feet. I can just imagine that the room soon hushed and as Jesus washed the grime from the feet of each disciple, the silence became even more pronounced as the master proceeded around the circle. Each of the disciples was busy with his own thoughts. And I can just imagine that they were ashamed, deeply ashamed of all the things that they'd been saying and all the feelings of hate and animosity that they'd been having towards each other only a few minutes before. True greatness is through humility. The disciples understood the unspoken rebuke in Jesus' actions. Jesus had every right to tell the disciples exactly what he thought of them, but what he did melted their hearts and their pride was flattened. Jesus said quietly, Do you understand what I have done for you? When Jesus washed their feet, he washed their hearts of pride and dissension. Jesus could say to them, You are clean. They had become humble and clean and could start afresh. Pride wounds and hurts someone else. The person who is proud is always looking down on someone else. But by demonstrating the humility and meekness of our Lord in our actions towards others, we can demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ. John's account in John 13, 6-9 points out that Peter's pride caused him to refuse Jesus' offer of washing his feet. Jesus wanted to teach Peter a lesson and said very quietly, Peter, you're not my disciple if you do not allow me to wash your feet. That was more than Peter could bear, so he declared, Lord, wash all of me, every part of me. Let's read the account. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered very quietly, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who've had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean.